Hey tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather, your host, and I'm 28 from the United Kingdom. This little channel of mine is a bubble filled with creativity and empowerment, documenting my journey of making memories and moments. I'm so glad you're all here to join me. If you're a returning viewer, hi, hello. I am so, so glad that you've come back to spend this time with me. And if you are brand new, hi, hello, and welcome. Um, so today's little vlog, uh, I have my little Christmassy backdrop. Check that out. I'm just going to um, talk to you about this little thing that's happened. I found my Crojo. So last week I put a vlog out saying how my Crojo, which I apologise if I confused anyone. If you're not familiar with the term, crojo is like your crochet mojo. And I put a vlog up last weekend saying, it's gone, crochet's gone, it's deserted me, it's never coming back. Well, I wasn't that extra, but I felt a little bit like that. Um, and that went out and I got some really great reassuring comments that so many of you have the same thing where you have that many creative pursuits that you one doesn't always hold your interest, um, that it doesn't mean that I love crochet any less. I genuinely feel like I cheated on crochet a little bit over the last few months, which again is another ridiculous. But so many of you are on the same page with, as me and we're saying the same thing and so that felt really really good and then it went out and I sort of sat down, had a bit of a talk with myself. I like I like to have these talks with myself. So I was journaling and I was I was writing that projects just aren't really holding my interest. Um, you know, the things I want to make aren't coming about. And then I was like, why not? And then I just realised that maybe some of the projects I want to do I've kind of written myself out of and thought no they're too difficult I can't do it or um, I've, I've kind of thought oh I'll do something a bit quicker so I've got something to show on the channel and I'd kind of just thought to myself this is silly I don't have anything to show on the channel because I've not been crocheting and I'm not getting that challenge or love out of a, out of a, a hobby that is a big part of my world so don't you worry, I had this talk with myself and I've started another project. So I now have two crochet projects on the go and the knitting has taken a back seat for now, but we will come back to that. So, right. First of all, I just want you to look at my lovely little, look at that. Fairy lights that are normally across the mantelpiece there, hijacked. Um, a lovely candle. It actually says white Christmas on the front and one of my friends made it for me for last Christmas and I didn't burn it. And today is December 1st and I'm doing that whole advent thing and so I've started my Christmas candle. My tree's already up, I put it up last week. I'm not even, I'm, I'm proud of it, don't try to steal my joy. I started Christmas early. Um, there's a pile of yarn there. Mm -hmm more yarn happened and then this side of things project bags so let's dive in um, I just want to show you a couple of things that are new to me that I missed off um, last week last week was all about the new acquisitions because there's been quite a few I have to also show you the lovely um, Lisa from Lisa Raspberry Crochet sent me this really cute card with owls on, which FYI is my spirit animal. And she'd also put in some stitch markers and I didn't show you them. So there's three magical stitch markers inspired by my vlog on um, magical moments. So I've got a, I think that's the wicker sign. Then this one is a little crystal bead. It kind of reminds me of the globe. And then I've got a crescent moon. 
which is quite fitting because actually at the moment I've just started reading Twilight again um, and I finished this morning just before setting up to record Twilight and so I'm going to start on New Moon um, I'm looking up there because on that top shelf it's entirely Twilight I have 16 books for Twilight I have the four books four times is that right four eight twelve sixteen yeah four times um i have the white copies with the red pages then i've got a well worn well loved well read copy of like the set but the spines are cracked the pages are all like mashed up genuine genuinely and generally not how i look after my books mine are normally pristine but I've read them that many times, they're dog-eared. Then I have the film editions. So when it became popular, because I was on the Twilight hype before it became mainstream, FYI. Um, before it, the films came out, I had the, you know, the ones that have like the apple and the ribbon on the front. Anyone that's not a Twilight hardy, sorry, just listen for two minutes and I'll get back to this. And then I've got the film ones where it's got like, um, Edward, Bella and Jacob from the from the film. Um, I was gonna say are you team Jacob or team Edward or are you team Why Choose? Um, and then I've got what's the other version? One, two, three, four. I've got another set of the pre-film release but in pristine untouched condition. I also have The Short Life of Brie Tanner, I also have the um, the newer one, the one where it's from Edward's point of view and he's holding the green apple. Yeah, Twilight, it's one of my bigger loves. Harry Potter's big love, Twilight's another lit like literary, literary big love. So I've got these magical stitch markers and I'm gonna be reading New Moon. Let me grab it. It won't be this one because this is the untouched film version. Has not ever been cracked? Um, and yeah, maybe it's a waste to have them like that, but I just love these books. So, new moon, and then I'm going to have a moon stitch marker to go with it. How cute is that? So thank you so much again, Lisa, for those. Um, really, really love them. I'm going to put the moon one on now on my new project, um, which means that I'm all matchy-matchy the way I love it. Um, I have to put this back because it's bothering me. Okay, that's back. And then I also got a new pin patch. Can you see it? It says plant lover. I think the reflection from the window is going to be a bit of a bother. Come on. Oh, my arms are burning as well. It says plant, plant person and I supported a Kickstarter for Geo Floor on Instagram and I purchased this pin badge and my reason being is because my housemate is plant mad so since she moved in there's a lot more plants in the house which I do really like um, and it makes the home the house feel much calmer and cleaner um, I mean there's five plants in this living room at the moment which isn't that huge amount compared to her bedroom but it's more than what there was before um and i've now got a couple of plants for my bedrooms so i've got an aloe vera and a little succulent um and I'll, i will, i really really want to get a bonsai as well um so i am i've always been like a bit of a plant person and i've enjoyed when i was younger i used to help my mum plant wild flowers for her garden um, and i really want to do more with the garden here and also I really wanted to support a smaller business um, and I just thought this was a really nice way to do it and it's a terrarium 
It's a triangular terrain, you know, one of them glass houses that they live in. And it's got a few cactus, cacti. I think that's plural for cactuses. It's got a few cacti in there. And so now that's living on my amazing project bag from Josie Rose, which has now got a Harry Potter section. It's got yarn badges and it's now got my miscellaneous pin, pin badges. Um, if you want to see more on this, go back to last week's where I showed off all three of my Harry Potter project bags. Um, and yeah, my growing pin collection, I really love it. And each one has a meaning. Um, rather than just go and buy random ones, every single one on here has a meaning. And I really, really like that. It's really cute to look at. I was really tempted in Primark, they've got Mary Poppins pin badges and I was really tempted to get them. Um, and so what I might do, might do, is crochet a big wall banner and all the random ones I see that I get just because I like them can all go on a wall banner. And then the ones that have got a bit more meaning can go on a project bag. Um, but it's really, really, really made me want a HGDC pin badge really really want to the point where I've actually designed one guys I've designed two tribe HDDC badges um so now I just need a little bit of a push to see that through and get them out there because I would love 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 to have HDDC with my yarn badges imagine that having my own one yeah so it's happening. Part of me is a little bit worried that no one will want one, but then I'm like, oh well, I want them. And then the other part of me is just, I don't know, It's I think it's fear. I've been really fearful the last few months for no real reason. And it's really crippling and it's really getting in the way of a lot of things. Quite a lot of my projects I just feel fearful of putting them out there. Um, the patterns for Enamoured and Inspirited are done but I feel really fearful putting them out there and so I haven't and, and that makes you feel rubbish and then you just get sucked into this it's not cool. Um, yeah I just feel a bit fearful and I would really like to put my own badges out there So maybe I just need to do that. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know if you'd like one and let me know if what things you do to overcome sort of fear or self-doubt because that's something I'm definitely wrangling with. Um, I think just without going into a lot of detail, a few things that have happened this year have just really knocked me and yeah, what's going on? That's something I'll have to work on. But anyway, new pin badge, um, there's more stitch markers. Oh, and when Geo Fleur sent out the, um, that's their name, sent out the pin badges, I got these little cards that have got all these plants on. And I think this one is gonna go on my mood board for next year. It's got a few dents in it from the pin badge back. But yeah, I think I'm gonna put the wrapping paper just fell over. I think I'm gonna put this one on my mood board, which is Simplify for this year. So that's great. Let's see if we can stand this up. Then, I've got more yarn. I got more yarn because I'm working on a project. So, it's glittery. If you're on Patreon, you've already seen this. I already sent it to Josie as well because I sent her a picture of me using her project bag. Why am I leaning forward? Let me just come closer. Look, it's sparkly, but it's black, so it's after my own heart. This is Knitting Essential Sparkle. It's from one of the pound shops near me. It's three for two, which means you get 150 grams for a pound? Is that right? No. Or is it a pound a ball and then you get a free one? 
so it costs you two pound for 150 grams it's two pound for 150 grams which i think is pretty decent as a hundred gram bowl from somewhere else would cost one pound 89 so to have 150 for two pounds not bad at all um and i went and brought a wadge of them i went and brought i got six and i already had two so i've got eight balls of it which is what 400 grams um i have been to see the crimes of grindelwald twice and before we went to the cinema we nipped in the pound shop to get some snacks and i quickly grabbed a load of that yarn they've got some great yarn in there um but i've been told not to get any because santa might have already eyed it up for me so i'm withholding and refraining which is a good thing because look at that but anyway so i got the yarn i've just destroyed my tower Oh, can you see it now? I got that yarn because in this little bag I'm working on a project. And out comes the yarn. It's not really helpful that I'm wearing black and I'm showing you black. But look at that glitter. So I've got a swatch in here which I've just yanked on and started to unravel. this is my swatch unfortunately black shows up a lot of Darcy hair so I'm gonna be forever pulling out Darcy hair but this is my swatch oh my goodness look at that so this is um <laughs> covered in Darcy hair and it is using in American terms it's half double crochet is it? Yeah, which I think to us is double crochet. Um, and it looks amazing. It's actually quite soft as well, considering it's got um, the glitter in it and it's acrylic from a pound shop. I'm using a four mil hook because I wanted that slightly tighter gauge and let me just get, where is the seam gone? One thing about working with black yarn is you have to have really good lighting to see what you're doing. And, oh, there it is. I feel like I have to really stare at it to work out what's going on. Okay, so I have started this. And this is the waistband, which I've done in single crochet back post. And then I am working on the top of my pair of high waisted leggings. And I kind of feel like now I've declared that I will never work on this again because the fear is too great in case I can't do it. But there we go. Um, I just love that colour and they're going to look amazing. So this is my waist. My waist is uh, like 26 inches and I've made the waistband 21 inches because the stretch, once you've got them on, is real. Um, so that's crazy. That little thing wears my waist. And then the stitch markers down the side are because they're the rows that I've put my increases on and trying to count on black yarn it's not so enjoyable and it, it would easily be one of the reasons why this project gets abandoned so i am just using all of the stitch markers um and i am due to increase on this side next um the all the stitch markers on here i've made myself with charms that i've brought so and yeah they fit so they they come to my waist <clears throat> just here and I'm now increasing over my hips I am not following a pattern I'm following a tutorial by naturally Danielle on YouTube thank you so much for putting that out there um 
as I said, I sat down with myself and I was having a real good, why are you not working on projects? Um, why is it that the projects you wanna work on, you're not working on? And one of the big things is fear, and it's something I still need to work on. I really want to make more wearable items and I wanted them to be more, um, it's really difficult because my style is all over the place. So I really want like a put together look where I've got like the colour palette and that's all I wear but then equally I see something and I'm like I love it, I want it even though it might not really go and so I guess I'm really still working on what my style is and also working on um, working on just being okay with what my style is rather than being like no I, I want to look you know these girls that look so put together it's just not me I just like to wear lots of black, I love to wear dresses, I love to wear floral print, um, I know the shapes that suit my body and they're not necessarily always what's on point or in, in trend and that's okay, I just need to work with that. So I'm making these, they're going to be quite very, not even quite, very close fitting um, and so I needed the gauge so that you couldn't see too much through them because oh, I've just pulled my stitch out I don't want and I never have been one of those girls that really likes to wear sheer clothing and um, I don't mind form fitting at all like it can be figure hug hugging and I'm fine with that I like my figure I'm happy to have but I can't do see-through so these need to cover everything like modesty is paramount to me look at the i just love it with the uh, jangles so that's why i'm going with i've gone with the four mil hook um and i mean you you can't really see a lot through that i don't feel like that will reveal too much but we'll see um i as i said i've been following naturally danielle um, I actually, you, I googled, I YouTubed, I searched for, anyway, um, legging, crochet legging or joggers, um, patterns and nothing really came up so then I googled crochet pants because that's what y'all Americans call it and I found, I found her and hit gold um, and so I watched it through whilst I was making some food I'm always watching something on YouTube or Netflix whilst I'm preparing food um, that way it just that's just what I do when I'm cooking and then um, yeah I was like oh wow and she although there's not a set pattern she talks you through what you need to do so with my bullet journal I sat and wrote it out and so what I've done is I've drawn some leggings and then I've put all my measurements down there of what my measurements are so my waist my hips my thigh my knee my ankle and then lengthwise I've done waist to hips um, ankle knee to ankle thigh to knee waist to ankle um, my inside leg, I've done all of that so that I know what measurements I am and then um, on the tutorial she stated that you should reduce by at least two inches for stretch um, and so I was originally for my waist going to go for 24 inches and I did make it to that and slip stitched it and it was way too big and when I listened back to hers again she had I think we have the same size waist, hers is a 26 as well and then she did her waistband to 21 inches um, so I did that, tried it and it is the tiniest, littlest bit still too big but if I make it any smaller I'm never going to get it over my hips um, because there is like 9, 10 inches between my waist and my hips I want it to fit here but I need it to, to come up over this bit so I'm just going to put a drawstring through the waistband so I can cinch it in that little bit and it won't gape at the back. I hate unsightly gaping. I like jeans that gape. Does it just, just do my head in? I can't do it. So drawstring it is then. 
um, and then on the tutorial she talks through how to work out your measure like how many stitches you're going to need based off this and so I measured it um, and one inch on this is four stitches and then in length ways it's three rows and so I know that if my waist is 26 when I was going for 21 then I need to do um, 21 inches so it, it's four times 21 and that's how many I needed to chain um, sorry that's how long I need to do it in length and all of that so yeah I found that really really useful um, then she then goes through and tells you of how so you've got your waistband and then you need to get to your hips and you're going to have to increase down that and so I worked out how many rows I would have from my waistband to, to my hips which is 30 rows and I needed to increase by 36 stitches and so you can then distribute them across that um, there are a few calculators online that you can do for um, increases for sleeves and I did use one of them just to see what that suggested um, and then really what I've been doing is trying this on every two minutes and that's the best thing I've found so far for making an item to wear is just to keep trying it on um, I I did do quite a bit of this before I tried it on and then I realised quickly that I was going to start to struggle to pull it down over my hips so I took it back a bit, worked out my measurements um, I think I, I, I become very very eager to see progress and so I rush ahead and then I'm adding rows and rows and rows and rows but I haven't worked out what it is I actually need a measurement wise and then it doesn't fit and then I get annoyed and it goes on the time out and then I never really get back into it so I'm really trying to measure and try it on as I go so at the moment I'm I'm sort of right at the top of my hips um, and I need to get it all the way to the widest part of my hips before I can put the band underneath that is the crotch I hate that word it's so vulgar it's got to be a nice way to say that word and then I can start on the legs it's actually really speedy this is not taking me long at all but I have frogged a fair bit and I may I might take it back and frog again so on the tutorial she actually uses a 4.5 for the body and a four for the ribbing and much like you would in knitting your ribbing should always be smaller but I've done a four the whole way through and it doesn't quite give me the stretch and also the seam which I'm going to have down the back I don't can you see it it's that jagged edge you can barely see it but it I was going somehow I'd managed to do it like that and I want it like that and so I've corrected it and it now is going straight you can barely see it but I know that it's wonky and that it's gonna bug me so for that reason I'm really tempted to take it back um, I don't know I think I'm gonna try it on again and just see how obvious that is um, and then I've decided that my seam is gonna go down the back and my reason being is that um, I want it to go straight down the back in between my butt cheeks and that should act as definition um, you can put it down the side but it would annoy me that it's only on one side so I'm putting it straight down the back and these leggings are going to be unapologetically baddie leggings so you know those girls you see on Instagram that you know do you know what a baddie is where they're like wearing a tight outfit just these are my baddie gram leggings um, in the making and then I've already envisaged doing a matching top but obviously I'm working on the, the jumper for Rito yarn at the moment so we shall see so that is my new project my crojo is back helped out massively by glitter and a new challenge um, I think what's key for me is to lay off with the pressure there's no need for it no need with the expectations I'm doing this for fun I'm doing this because it's something that I enjoy doing and if it doesn't work out fine I can just frog it it's not the end of the world 
and to not give up just to keep trying um so yeah body gram leggings which is currently living in my little marauders map um project bag and it will stay in there for a while until it becomes too big to live but i mean it's got a hundred uh it's got a 50 gram ball in there and then there is just over 50 grams on in the leggings now and there's plenty of room in there um and I'm, my measuring tape and my hook did i put my hook back in yeah i'm taking this out after and you know if i get there and i've not got my hook curses so yeah there's plenty of room in there um i think that will probably stay in there until I get on to maybe another two balls from now. Um, so yeah. My only other thing is I need something to hold on my stitch markers. So I wanted ideas, inspiration. Um, I use a lot of stitch markers but I don't really have anything to carry them around in. Um, I've got them all shoved in this at the moment which is okay but it's not so I wanted some sort of stitch marker holder so if anyone's got any ideas I did think about making like a chain mail bracelet that I could link them on but I wouldn't wear it uh, so it needs something to be that I can carry around easily that I'm not going to get tangled that obviously looks cute I did think about I've got a brooch that you can put them on of putting it on that on my little needle book that I made but I don't really carry that that doesn't go with me with every project maybe I should get a brooch and put it on the front of the project bag it could be an idea with a few stitch markers on it I don't know anyone's got any suggestions or ideas let me know and also my swatch board so um a lovely subscriber commented to say maybe I should make a blanket out of all of these swatches because I have got these that I've rounded up so far but there are more oh come on let me sort that out so that Darcy doesn't stand on any pins because that would make me a bad dog mum this is my beaded swatch Remember that? Mm, I'd love to do more knitting with beads. Crochet with beads. So yes, I'm looking for ideas of what to do with swatches and what to do with stitch markers. So if anyone's got any suggestions, please let me know. Um, then in terms of knitting, I am working on the cowl. I've run out of love of it a little bit. I think I'm slightly bored because it's just plain knitting. But also that whole wobble of what if I want a, um, a me made wardrobe that's really put together and curated and stylistic, then I really need to stick to a colour palette and that pop of pink. But then I'm like, come on, it's, life's too short, just wear the things that make you happy. Um, so I've paused that at the moment and that that's due to start melding into the black if you remember it's like a big block of grey and then the pink chevron and now I'm going to go into the black chevron and then carry on into the grey and then that will be ended in the pink as well and then I'll stitch up and it'll be done so maybe I should just stop second guessing myself and doubting myself and just crack on um, and then the next thing I want to do which I'm going to start today is I want to do a sort of advent type project, never really done that before um, and what I'm going to do is the fluorite socks from Pom Pom magazine uh, let's see where I put it Pom Pom magazine, this is the hmm, it's called Vivid Winter, it's issue 23 um, I bought this at Edinburgh Young Festival 
because there's representation on the front um, and I really wanted to make tabula which is that needless to say I haven't got around to it yet um, but there was also these socks fluorite by Andrew Maori who I follow on Instagram and she's goals and it's basically a faded pair of socks um, and it gives you the instructions do, do, do. Um, it tells you how to pick the, the colours so Oh, next door's barking. Well, the dog is. It basically tells you that how to work out from how many colours you've got, how many rows of each one you'll be doing, um, to how to fade it, how to fade from one colour to the next, how to alternate your colour, current colour for how many rounds with the next to get that fade. <clears throat> and so what I want to do is I'm going to take all of my stock yarn with me right now to my grandma's and I'm spending the afternoon with her um, and while we're there I'm going to get her to help me pick the fade and then I'm going to work it out all out in my journal so how many stitches I should do for each and then I want to do them two at a time and I don't see that being an issue. I think these are made one at a time, but they are toe, yeah, they're toe up, <coughs> excuse me, my, <coughs> I'm croaky, they're toe up, and so I think I can do these two at a time, and that means that then my rows will be identical, and yeah. I'm really looking forward to them and they're going to be sort of my advent my advent make uh, I just like the thought of putting a few rows on them each day and then being my December 2018 Christmas socks um, I can really see this becoming a tradition and today is December 1st so what a better day to start them and cast them on um, and then It'd just be quite nice to work through that with my grandma and pick out the colours. I never call her grandma, she's nanny, but I always call her grandma on here. Maybe so that you all know who I mean. But I'm going to pick that out with my nanny um, and get those cast on and then I can work on them, which would be good because I haven't got a project at the moment that I can work on when I'm in church or when I'm just out and about. And so I haven't really been taking a project out and about with me. So it'd be good to get back to doing that um, so I can cake up all my yarn um, I'll take pictures of the colour, the order for the colours and I'll write it all out in my journal and hopefully cast those on today. So I am now going to get going so that I can get over to her house and have my lunch and spend a lovely afternoon there. Um, and. I will see you again soon. I did really want to do Vlogmas, but my phone, which I record on, has needed to be sent off repair for ages, and I haven't done it, and I really, really need to do it, which means I'm not gonna have my phone, my phone for Vlogmas. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit annoying. I'll see what I can do. Um, hopefully I won't have it for too long. I can just see me never sending it off for repair because I don't want to be without it and that's basically that, which is silly. <laughs> but anyway, if I sort that out, then there'll be a few like, sort of vlogmas um, videos to come up. If not, then I will just be recording on my Mac next weekend and I'll put that all out to you. So it's December guys, I can officially say the word Christmas. Christmas time I am um, I just I love the Christmas cheer Christmas is difficult but I love putting the tree up I love all the lights um, and then maybe next time I'll talk to you about projects that I 
want to make for Christmas. Um, with 24 days to go, I should really sort my act out. Yeah. Oh gosh. Right, I'm going to go because I'm now rambling. So thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me here with my lovely little sparkly setup. It looks so cute. Um, I will see you again next week. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Have a lovely, lovely time till I do see you. Lots of happy moments making and memories. Peace.